Leopard sharks are related to hound sharks. Hi, Happy New Year everyone. I hope 2020 is a great year for you. My name is Brandon, I'm a marine biologist and an artist, and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experience with aquatic animals with you. It is my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them through science, stories, and art. If you are new, welcome! Please stick around to the very end to hear about this month's charity opportunity. Today we'll be discovering the leopard shark. Are you ready? Let's dive in! Triaches semifasciata are known as leopard sharks. Its scientific name is a Greek translation of three-pointed tooth with half-banded markings. Leopard sharks are a species of hound sharks. So where in the world can we find this animal? Leopard sharks live in the eastern Pacific Ocean from the coast of Oregon to the Gulf of California, Mexico. They prefer habitat that consists of mud flats, sandy bottom, kelp forests, enclosed bays, and estuarine waters. The term estuarine might be new to you. It refers to a body of water that is fed by fresh water. It is a mixture between salt and fresh water. They spend most of their time on or near the benthic surface, also known as the bottom. Leopard sharks are not deep water animals. They spend most of their time under 20 feet deep, but have been recorded at 300 feet. They follow the tide and form small schools. Leopard sharks are smaller sharks and will follow the tide just fast enough so that they don't get themselves stranded or beached. Now that we know where leopard sharks are found and what habitat they prefer, let's discover what they look like and some behaviors. So, what are we looking for? Leopard sharks are small sharks. They grow to 3.9 to 4.9 feet long on average. They have a slender build with a broad, thin head. They are light gray to bronze gray with a white belly. This is known as countershading. It allows the animal to use light as camouflage. They can disappear into dark substrate when viewed from above and disappear into the light from below. The thing that makes this shark special is its dark saddle and spotted markings all over its body. As adults age, the centers of their saddle markings lighten. This gives the shark the appearance of leopard spots. Unfortunately, the leopard shark does not have the amazing eyesight like a real leopard. They spend most of their time in muddy and silty waters. They don't have many cones in their eyes. They have oval eyes that can see well, but primarily they rely on electroreceptors known as ampullae of Lorenzini. It is a sensory organ that picks up tiny electrical senses of its prey and animals around it. They don't need to see when they have other senses. I would put in a sixth sense joke here, but I know you're all dying to move on. Leopard sharks have two rounded dorsal fins. The first one is in the middle of the body between the placement of the pectoral and pelvic fins. Then the second one is close to the tail. The caudal fin is longer on the top than it is on the bottom. It is also rounded with a notch on the top lobe. This animal does not want a tall caudal lobe. We need to remember that it spends a lot of time in shallow water. It doesn't want to stick out of the water too much. I know everyone pictures sharks in movies where the tall dorsal fin is gliding out of the water. This animal does not want to be seen. It also needs a low center of mass if it does get too shallow and beaches itself. The last thing that this shark wants is to be tipped over onto its side because its fins are too tall. It can wiggle its way into deeper water while it's on its stomach, but if it flips over onto its side, it can't get back into the water. The pectoral fins, pelvic fins, and anal fins also need to have low profile. 
The pectoral fins are large, triangular fins that are low to the, on the body and pointed outwards. Let's get to the detail that everyone is worried about, the teeth. What kind of teeth does the leopard shark have? They have several rows of tri-tip teeth. They are lined up facing to the back of the mouth. They overlap in a way that makes it hard to escape. This type of tooth formation is known as pavement formation. Yes, these teeth could puncture through human skin if improperly handled. Who is handling shark teeth in an unsafe manner anyways? Leopard sharks form small to medium schools and don't migrate far. Females are known to bounce from one school to another to keep breeding diversity high. During the day, these sharks spend their day in shallow water feeding, then move to deeper water during the night. Females give birth to 4 to 44 live pups between April and May. Their gestation period is 10 to 12 months, and females reach fertility after a few years. Larger females birth more pups than small females. Since the leopard shark does not migrate, it is believed that there are seven distinct populations of leopard sharks. The population in San Diego is thought to be the most separated from the rest of the leopard sharks due to isolation. All right, that is plenty of info on appearance and behavior. Let's get into the diet and population health of the leopard shark. What do they eat? They are scavengers and rovers. They eat benthic invertebrates and small bony fish. The invertebrates include crabs, shrimp, tube worms, and clam siphons. Apparently they only eat the siphon and not the body. The fish they eat include herring, anchovies, midshipmen, sand dabs, shiner perch, hound shark, and bat rays. So how are they doing? The IUCN Red List has them listed as least concern. The study was completed in 2015. Populations are at risk of overfishing at the population level. They are slow growing and don't make many offspring every year. Regulation is really helping keep this animal at safe levels. Did you notice that humans were not on the list for diet? That is because these sharks don't eat humans. In fact, there is only one case of a leopard shark attack on a human, and that human was being dumb and provoked the animal. Even then, the human was not seriously harmed, so just don't be dumb and leave the sharks alone. It is time for my favorite part of the adventure, the segment where I tell you about my personal encounter with the leopard shark. How did I meet the leopard shark? I met it at the Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium. It was in their Pacific Seas encounter in their California kelp forest tank. There were several leopard sharks swimming around the encounter. They swam around the kelp and tank in small groups. They cruised the tank at a high speed. They are such graceful creatures. I love sharks. They are so sleek and have such amazing character. It is okay to have a fear of sharks, but I want you to take a moment and appreciate them. Especially these sharks. They won't hurt you. Fun fact. I have had the opportunity to pet a pup. It was in a tank and the scientists wanted us to feel what their skin feels like. Sharks have placoid teeth all over their body. It creates a directionality to their scales. It is smooth and silky in one direction, but rough in the other. This helps with hydrodynamics. I love sharks. I saw this one and knew it needed to be in this season. I love showing you bizarre fish and animals, but I also have a soft spot for the big popular animals known as charismatic megafauna. I want people to be educated about our oceans and then care about our oceans. As the final details of this painting come into focus, I will call this adventure finished.
Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, click subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified when I post new content. I do my best to post new content every other weekend. This last little bit was pretty busy with the holidays. Um, I was spending a lot of time with family, so it wasn't as regular. But now that it's the new year, I'm going to get back on track. I'll be kicking off January with a charity supporting the American Red Cross. They provide many services from disaster relief, emergency response, and training. I chose the American Red Cross because I have family members who have had uh, heart conditions or heart attacks and they were saved through CPR. American Red Cross, you can get certified in CPR um, for this. I'm CPR certified for because I'm a swim coach, I have to for my training. I also, I think it's just a really good idea to know first aid and CPR. The more people who know it, the more you could save somebody's life. In an instance like a heart attack and somebody collapses, CPR can save their life uh, and every second counts. Here's how I want you to help. You can either, you can do one of three things, or you can do all three things if you so choose. You can donate blood, you can get CPR certified, or you can donate money. It's super simple, I'm already cert CPR certified, so I donated uh, money at the beginning of the month um, to this program. I have a link in the description so that you can go there if you would like. If you would like to help this community, I sell my art in the forms of originals and museum quality prints of Giclés. My originals run $12 a linear inch, so what you do is you add the height and width and multiply that by 12. So, and then my prints run $6 a linear inch for my um, limited run prints and my unlimited runs are $3 a linear inch. My limited edition are as close to the original as I can get them while still being a print. I am also introducing um, large panoramic posters. It's the one, it's the panorama with the mountains, the orcas, and the salmon. It has an inspirational quote on it. Um, I'm going to be introducing those, and you can buy those as well. All of the links are down in the description below. Please go help the American Red Cross. Or if you don't want to do that and you want to help my community, links are down there as well. You are very important to me. And special. Thank you so much for your time. Remember to spread love and curiosity. I've been Brandon, and I will see you in our next adventure.